Welcome to Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're here at 225 Parsons Street, the home of Heritage Guitars. We're located here at one of the most iconic guitar building locations in all the world. We'd like to show you a little bit about our operations and our plant today. We have a number of great vendors we work with that help to supply us with the finest lumber available for the instruments we make here. We use genuine mahogany here in Kalamazoo. For our solid body guitars, we purchase one piece blocks that come in two different weights, lightweight and super lightweight. Maple is used extensively here in the construction of our guitars, whether it be the necks, the rims, the backs, the tops. We primarily use Eastern Maple. It comes to us in several grades, including A grade and high grade. Some of the arch tops we make here have spruce tops or sound boards. We prefer Sitka spruce for this. In this area of the plant, we're beginning to make our finger boards. Most of our finger boards are made out of either rosewood or ebony. We feature a multitude of different inlays, binding packages. And I've got a few examples here for you. You can see here we have some rosewood boards that feature mother of pearl trapezoid inlays. These are about ready to have the fret wire installed. After the fret wire is installed, we'll clean up, get it to our final dimension and put binding on it. We'll end up with something like this. But some of our fingerboards don't have any binding at all. You can see here I've got a couple of examples of the different scale lengths. This ebony board here is actually 25 and a half inch scale, where this rosewood one is 24 and 3 quarter inch scale. And you can see when we line up the fret wire that they start off being relatively in the same position. But as we travel down the board, you can see that the mathematics have changed on this. We also have some examples of some custom work that we've done in the past for some customers at our custom shop. So it's not too uncommon for people to come and ask us if we can do special things, make their guitars a little more special. We like to accommodate that work when we can. So in this area of the shop is where we begin to make our necks. Uh, we make two different types of necks here at Heritage. We make what we call a five-piece maple neck. With several pieces of wood laminated together. The rest of our necks are solid mahogany. You can see we start off with a block like this. I have a couple different examples to show a little bit of the process. You can see that this has been roughly cut out. We've now channeled it for a truss rod to go inside. Now the truss rod has been installed and the spline has been applied to cover the truss rod. And here we are just a little further down the line where it's been trimmed up. The neck has now been machined to have a rough radius on the back. There's been a tenon cut on it. From this point here, we will be attaching fingerboards to the neck. And every now and then we'll even apply a head veneer to the top of the neck. You can see here as well, we currently have a five-piece neck that has the fingerboard that's being glued and clamped to it. So this is really where this whole operation begins. Uh, this neck will go further down the line into neck rolling a little bit later. This is the neck fitting area. This is where the necks are received and we begin to finalize the shape of the neck. As you can see, we have a neck that's just been received to this area, and it's still pretty rough. This one will still need to get a head veneer and get drilled out for that, as well as rolling and shaping of the neck. The rolling and shaping of the neck is actually done here on a belt sander that I have behind me. The operator will actually take that rough neck and begin to roll it into this moving sandpaper. As you can see, this neck has pretty much been rolled. It needs a little bit of touch up, but it looks pretty good. The binding is still completely all intact and these edges are nice and smooth yet. We've done a little bit of measuring as well. We have certain shapes that we like to keep here. We have certain depths and widths. 
the headstock needs to be a certain width depth to hold the tune in case. So this is really where the guitar necks get rolled and where they actually meet their bodies. And they also fit the necks here using a chisel and a multitude of gauges. This is one of the gauges they would employ. The pins touch the fingerboard. The last pin touches the top of the body, ensuring that it's in the body on a particular pitch. Not only do these necks have to go into the body and be straight, but they need to be on a particular pitch as well. In this area of the shop, we're beginning to build the rims. The rims are the sides of the guitars. We do that by taking material and machining it down very thin. In this instance, it's about 90 thousandths of an inch. It makes it quite pliable. We'll actually take this material and soak it in water for a period of time, making it more pliable yet. We'll take that material and wrap it around these rim bending uh, fixtures that we have that are heat driven. As the wood is wrapped around these, the water evaporates out of the wood and helps to lock it in the positions that we're looking for. So we're actually going to take a piece of wood similar to this. turn it into something that looks more like this. As you can see, that's held into position now. And this is how we're going to start to make one of our famous double cutaway guitars. Later on, we'll cut this down to a very particular length and start building the rim. We have a number of these fixtures that allow us to make all different shapes that we need for the different instruments that we build here. You can see behind me, I have another fixture that makes a little bit different shape. That's half of one of our bigger arch top guitars. You can see now that we've got that rim stock already bent. We've cut it down to a very particular length. This is exactly the size we need to make our guitars. We have a couple of fixtures here where we've gone ahead and started gluing head and tail blocks, center blocks to these rims, and this will help complete the rim set. Now that the rim is completed, it's time to line the rim. The rim is very thin and won't hold any glue for us to affix anything to it, so we utilize a lining. We make our own lining here on mahogany. We'll run this through a lining saw that will cut grooves in it like this, making it much more flexible. This flexibility allows us to manipulate this around the edge of the rim quite easily. This is what a rim set will look like when it's complete. We'll go ahead and sand this down and this will be ready to affix to a top in the back. So we're here in the shop and I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the guitars we are making here today. In particular, this one here. This is a semi-hollow body guitar and it's rather unique in the way it's constructed. This is actually a laminated guitar. Most of our guitars, or a lot of our guitars I should say, are actually carved solid pieces of wood. Our arch shops, for instance, we carve an arch into the wood, and we carve an arch into the backside of the wood. We trace out a pattern and cut it out. And that's how we would go ahead to start making one of our arch top panels to build our arch top guitars. The same thing applies for our solid body guitars. We take solid pieces of wood, in this case mahogany and maple joined together, and we would carve this down using some carving machines. So we'd end up with something like this. This has been finished sanded as well. But on this instrument, it's a laminated guitar, and we build them a little bit differently. The arch in the guitar is actually pressed into the laminations using force. We take three veneers, maple with a poplar core and another piece of maple. We glue these together and press them under a great amount of pressure. And you can see here the sandwiches of wood that have been glued together. If you look kind of closely, you can see that arch that's been pressed into the top. We've traced this out now so that you can see the shape that we'll eventually end up cutting it out into. It'll end up being a piece something like this. We take patches and we glue them to the inside of this arch to help fill up that space. 
so that when we assemble it with a rim, you can see that when we put this together, that patch soaks up that extra space, essentially creating a solid block that runs from top to bottom. And that's why we call this a semi-hollow body guitar, is it actually is quite solid here in the middle, going from top to bottom, front to back. So that's essentially the difference between our laminated guitars and our carved guitars. This is the area of the plant where we install the binding on the guitar. The binding is a plastic applique that goes around the edge of the body. It serves a few different purposes. Number one, it frames the guitar and is quite beautiful. Number two, it helps us to disguise our work just a little bit. And number three, it makes a durable bumper for the edge of the guitar. So the body up here in this area over here, we we'll begin to process them further for that binding. That would include rabbiting a ledge or an edge on the side of the guitar. I told you that the binding helped disguise our work. This is one of the instance of that. We can see that we have a maple top glued to a mahogany body. When we install that binding, it'll help us to better disguise that and add a cohesive look to the instrument. A lot of the binding is simply one ply, but there are cases where we'll apply multiple layers of binding, multiple layers on the back. This is all done too by using a special glue that we make and wrapping the binding in there with rope or what we like to call lace. After we assemble the guitars, we come in in the morning and unclamp the necks from the bodies. And we go ahead and route them out for pickup cavities here. And we drill them so that we can mount a tailpiece and bridge on these as well. Then they make it over to this station. The station I'm standing in now is really a finishing sanding station. The employee here identifies any imperfections in the instrument, whether it's a little scratch, maybe a little bubble between the binding and the body. Any little nick or scrape has to be removed over at this station. We practice a lot of quality assurances as we build these guitars, but this area in particular is a very quality control oriented station. When they leave this station, they really have to be perfect. We're gonna bring these guitars from this point into the paint area, and any imperfection will show up drastically under paint. finishing department of our facility. This is where we begin to paint all of our guitars. We have a new paint booth behind us that's been working out really well for us. It's very well lit, it's exhausted really well, and it's back pressure to keep it clean and contaminant free. We use nitrocellulose lacquer here to paint all of our instruments. It's a very traditional material, but very labor intensive to work with. We take great pride in our finishes and we really feel like even though this material is labor intensive, the, the results are worth the while. What may interest a lot of people is that we paint right over the top of the plastic binding on our guitars. We come in afterwards after they've been shaded like this and we remove that paint using a series of metal scrapers. Once we've scraped the binding clean, we'll bring them back into the paint booth and protect them with several coats of clear lacquer. So this guitar has been painted now, and it's been curing for some time, and it's ready to continue down its process. It's hard to tell from here, but this finish looks pretty good. But if you look at it closer, it has kind of a bumpy appearance. We like to refer to that as orange peel. And we need to tend to that before we go any further. What we'll do is we'll hand sand this down using progressive grits up to about a thousand grit sandpaper to level out all that bumpiness. Here I have a guitar where the top has been sanded and now it's completely flat. And you can see that it's left with kind of a milky appearance and it's because we've literally scratched that lacquer. So we'll need to shine this up. And we'll do that by using these buffing wheels. 
These buffing wheels that I have next to me hold a couple of different compounds that are progressively finer, and they essentially will shine this guitar going to about 2,000 and up to about 6,000 grit. When they come off of the spinal bucket wheel over here, they really do shine. They almost have a dipped in glass look to them. This is what we're looking for. We like to buff off a lot of this finish, leaving just the finest amount of finish protecting the paint. If you go too far into that paint, you need to start over again. So these buffing wheels and the sanding process very critical to our finishes. Now that the guitars have been finished and they're shined to our liking, they've received over in an area we like to refer to as parts and assembly. This is where we'll start to install the tuning keys and the rest of the hardware, as well as soldering up all the electronics and installing that. All this work needs to be done quite gingerly, is not to bump this paint with any of the metal parts. We've spent a great deal of time shining these guitars. We like to leave them looking as close as we can. So these people have to work very carefully to install all these parts. Now our guitars are completely assembled. It's received all of its parts. It's been strung and it's up to tune. We're not done quite yet. Our guitars still go through a number of quality assurance checkpoints. Um, none more important than these at the very end of the line. We actually have two quality assurance checkpoints that these things go through before they make their way out to shipping. We'll store them in cases, and then before they ship, they actually go through another quality assurance checkpoint before they're boxed and sent off to dealers and customers all around the world. So we're here in the showroom at Heritage Guitars. This is a good place to show you some of the different types of instruments we make here. We make a full line of six string electric guitars and they're represented in this room quite well. We make solid body, single cutaway guitars, very iconic style, as well as making semi hollow body guitars, fully hollow versions. This is a good place to show you some of the limited colors that we do and just how individual each one of these guitars really are. We hope you enjoyed your tour here today. On behalf of all of us from Heritage Guitar, we'd like to thank you for joining us as part of this great event put on by Guitar.com Live. If you'd like to learn any more about the guitars we create here in Kalamazoo, feel free to visit us at HeritageGuitars.com.